Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world, hey, how are you? It's Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with a very close personal friend, Dr. Joe. Not anymore, Di Stefano. It is now Joseph Anu. And of course, he is the founder of Runga and in the Intuitive Warrior podcast. He is a holistic health badass who's been in the game as long as me. And Joe is actually a real expert on many things in life. So it's an honor to have him here, too. We've been talking about doing this podcast for a long time. Joe, man, what's it like to be Joe Anu, bro? Hey, man. It's pretty cool, right? It's... um. It feels really cool. Like people know how cool it feels to like get a new car, get a new job, buy a new house, right? And and changing your name is like is like the ultimate. It's like the ultimate kind of intentional step into a higher vibration, uh, your higher greatness, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey, and it's you know it's this. It's exciting. It's scary. It's, but right now, you know, it's been a couple of months and it's like, wow. Like it, it's just, I say my name and my heart opens as opposed to, you know, my former name, believe it or not, after some work and a lot of it, I've noticed that like my name was actually a limiter. It was like, I can only achieve to this level at this name. And I have, I have higher aspirations than that. I need to well, step into my own. Well, look, man, I, I listened to your podcast with Ben. You were amazing. You know, ben, you actually kept Ben engaged the entire podcast, which is saying a lot these days because he talks to so many different people. But it was really an amazing podcast. And as I told you, man, I'm I'm very grateful and privileged that I'm you know here to talk to you about your transformation. And you know, obviously, we're going to go even way deeper on the spiritual side of things. But I'll just give the audience, like you know, me and you talking, you know, where it's been for you and I in just the last three years, mm-hmm. and. I think it was, dude, it was either 2018 or 2019, you know, you invited me on your podcast for the first time and we did this profound spirituality podcast. We went so deep. It was so metaphysical. There's so many amazing uh, comments from both of us. As you know, so many people in the sphere that we're in, you know, made comments about it. We're like, dude. So it's like, I'm grateful that that happened, you know, on your channel and you exposed me to your audience and, you know, then vice versa and all these things. But both of us have had just (laughs) insane like most people, I would say, but the last two years have been a whirlwind, bro. And, and, you know, the side of the fence that you and I are on, which, you know, if we can just, you know, use the scale, you know, like probably stand somewhere between 300 and 400, you know, every now and then get up to 500 when you do MDMA or something, (laughs) right. Or MDA or whatever. But like, the truth is, is that it's so insane on the planet. People in awareness levels that we have, and there are now many more of us, thank God are like, What in the fuck is next, right? Whereas the people that are not aware and asleep, and again, we're not judging or condemning them. We're just making this a statement. I mean, they're kind of just like, I mean, it's kind of like for them, it's still the same thing. It's like, how am I going to get my next meal? Yeah. You know, is my boss going to give me the day off? You know, it's, it's the things that really aren't important, but for them, they are. So, I mean, it's like, the dichotomy of the world is so insane. What made you decide that it was time to change your name? Now, I know the answer because we've been talking about it, but maybe for the audience, just kind of let them know why you're doing it or why you've done it. I'm sorry. Right. And thanks, Jay. And, and you know, and, and there are a lot of ways to answer that question. It's very multifaceted. And I guess I'll start just by saying, you know, as you mentioned, these past two years, like if you weren't in the right job, if you weren't in the right relationship and you weren't in total like shame and and that's not where you reside. So if you live in a higher level of consciousness and you were not in the right place, you were either ripped from that place. Those people were actually, you know, maybe ripped from your lives or you're in the process (laughs) of stepping into your own. Right. And so there's this, like, it actually would take more effort to stay 
put for some of us than make a major change. So, totally. so that's sort of number one. Um, and then kind of going into kind of more of this, there's just this, um, it's not a time to kind of live. It's not a time to live limited. It's not a time to wonder what if, and as your energy, again, as you're becoming a little bit more heart centered and you're really kind of meandering with purpose. And again, you're not in that state of like, where's my next meal coming from? Right. You know, is my neck, is my bonus going to hit this week? Right. My, <laughs> you know, it's like, if you're in this sort of more expansive, then you're, you're living a lot less limited and the potentials are much greater. And so I just simply began to feel into that. And, and as you mentioned on Ben's show, I went into some of the specifics around why this is a good idea. And I guess I would start by just saying, you know, there's a reason yogis change their name after a certain right. amount of practice because you're in this place where Muhammad Ali is probably the greatest example, right? He just said all of a sudden, I'm Muhammad Ali now. I am, you know, I am no longer who I was. And people were kind of giving him a hard time. I refuse to call you that, but look what he achieved, right? And so there's this, you know, we've got a lot of soul contracts with our parents, with our family, with ourselves. There's a lot we're supposed to achieve in this life. And as we start to get clear on our mission and our purpose, it's like, well, I get a, you got to strip away if you're really going to go for it. And you're not going to be one of those people that's kind of stuck in, in, um, in the matrix, I guess we'll say, uh, then you got to do what you got to do. And, um, again, I could, I could go into some, some other areas, but I think, I think that's really kind of the, the high level, you know, it's kind of, I felt like it was my responsibility and my duty right now to do this for my family, myself, and hopefully to kind of, um, set an example or kind of give people permission to step into this area. And I've had quite a few people since that podcast reach out and say, Hey man, this resonates. So, You're like, how do I do it myself? Right. right. So a lot of people have that question. Well, you know me, bro. I want to go deeper with you on this. So, <clears throat> no, you know, because I know you're the guy to pull this stuff out. So, I mean, let's just, you know, call it what it is. I mean, each of us have lost a lot of friends. We've lost a lot of family members. We've lost a lot of sheeple in the last two years. Right. And that's cool. They're on their path. You and me are on our path. Everybody's on their own path but all paths are literally walking the same direction, some faster than others. And so that's cool, right? Like, again, no shame, no condemnation, no judgment. Everybody is where they need to be exactly as it is right now. Yeah. And as you consented to, but bro, it's insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we've witnessed, how people just are oblivious. I don't have to name things or events. Everybody knows at this point. Well, if you don't know at this point, <laughs> you're probably not watching this podcast, so yeah. I won't even say it. But, but the likelihood of so many people like empathizing with you right now is very high. Mm -hmm. But as you know, most people, as you said earlier, are shamed into still suffering and still, you know, synonymizing, essentializing the relationships with quote unquote loved ones or family members. Or people that are, let's just be honest. I mean, no, it's, it's, as you know, it's resonance or dissonance, they're not vibrating where you're vibrating. Mm -hmm. And so we understand the law of attraction, which is really the law of harmony or the law of resonance. And it's like, you know, that which is like attracts the other, right? So you you can't be with people who are not like you. Mm -hmm. If that's what you choose, because again, religion or family bonds, you know, the, I love the Catholic word, you know, blood is thicker than water. <laughs> you, none of that shit. It's so insane, you know, how we're brainwashed and conditioned and trained to like establish, you know, these energy patterns of, again, being with people that are really not like us. And so yeah. it takes balls yeah. to do what you did, you know, just like it takes balls for me to not associate with my own family. Now, I, it's not that I don't love them, but they're in the East Coast and I'm out here and we got perfect enough distance <laughs> between each other that, you know, we don't have to be in those energy fields. But I mean, I kind of want you just to, you know, really go through, you know, some of the pain that you really had to deal with, because as you know, bro, it's not easy to do this. It's, it's not easy to do this. And, and to your point, Jay, you know, you're absolutely, and especially it's almost like at the point you're at, you know, maybe if you're a thousand on the scale, you can walk into you know, a room full of folks that are resonating really low and, you know, elevate the entire space yep. and not be affected. Yep. But in this time, you know, as you speak, even on the hormonal front, like we're being bombarded. Oh. And so there's this, like, we have to protect our fields and we have yep. to protect the people we spend our time with. Yep. And we have to do a lot of inner work and we have to, 
use therapeutic testosterone if that's, you know, if that's right for us. And we have to do these things so that we can actually live the life we're meant to live. Yes. And I'll say that, you know, the crazy part is, and I guess one of the challenges, and it's a little bit like um, when you're, you know, when you're coaching somebody and, um, you know, they don't stick to the diet because, you know, maybe this is pre COVID, but they don't stick to the diet because they're embarrassed to bring their own food to work Dude. because, you know, work provides lunch and it's always horrible and they don't want to be the health freak with the salad because of what the, the sort of judgment that they either feel or perceive whether or not that's true or not from their coworkers and that keeps them stuck. Right. So when, you know, as it relates to a name change or any major life change, it creates a mirror for those people you're spending time with or right. the people that associate themselves with you. So one of the hardest things to hold and to carry and to kind of just sort of become armored to and become just, you know, that you really have to fight through is this like, feeling of conditional love, this feeling of shame, this feeling of all of these negative emotions that is really those people's inability to look in the mirror at themselves. Because if Jay is changing, if Joe is changing to Joseph or De Stefano is changing to a new, what, what, what am I doing wrong? If I'm staying put, what am I doing wrong? What it, you know, it, it's this like, and it creates this uncomfortable scenario for those people that become offended by this change you're making, because now the circle has changed in their opinion. And suddenly you've been replaced with a mirror, as I said. And so in some cases, it maybe drives them even lower on the consciousness scale. And in hopefully fortunate long-term cases, it actually could be an impetus for them to actually say, oh, wow, now I get it. Even if it's in a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, in retrospect, chances are anybody that felt that way about my change or that wanted to judge anything I was doing, chances are they're going to figure it out eventually. But I know the truth right now. So that's our highest responsibility is to follow that truth. Beautiful, man. Truth is a very resonant frequency, man. It is. And look, man, truth is not for everybody. I mean, you know, like we were talking, that's a good point. We, we, we were talking, <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the masses do not. Okay. So, you know, I told you, I just came from a mastermind. You had an amazing experience this weekend too. It seems like all of us continue to have these insane experiences, which is you know part of the gift of living. Uh, but, you know, we were talking about the, 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 the internet marketing community and the internet world. The majority of people under the age of 25, as you know, have no discernment. They have no critical thinking skills because they have not been taught any of them. They, they grow up with the screen in their hands. Yep. A lot of times their parents placated them by putting a freaking iPad or whatever it is in their hands. Hey, watch cartoons, watch TV, whatever. Right. So some of these people literally trust in the screen. And you and I both know there is nothing of any kind of validation or truth coming from the screen anymore. Because again, the screen wants people placated. They want people indoctrinated. They want people numb. They want people in the metaverse. They want people, you know, again, all the other things coming chipped monitored through social credit systems. I mean, we all, we know all this, but so, so the, the, the scary part is though, Joe is like the younger people and I, and I, I'm not picking on them, but again, you know, we'll just say people under the age of 25. And I know there's a lot of millennials that fall into this, you know, category too, but um, they don't have these skills because they weren't taught them. Schools now are indoctrination camps, as you yeah. know, mm -hmm. I mean, any legitimate conscious parent today can't even afford to put their kid in a, in a school, I mean, even most private schools are indoctrinated if you really pay attention to the, the rhetoric and the curriculum. So at what point will people get to a place where they actually desire truth? Because again, as you know, it's the Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Right. There isn't truth, Joe. And you know this, you know, very well. We've talked about this on previous shows that we've done together because people don't trust and love themselves. And when you don't trust and love yourself, you can't have truth. Truth doesn't even exist to you. You would prefer the internet marketer who lies to you. You know, the 50 guy, 50 year old guy who just sells his company for $10 million and comes to you and I with one foot in the grave, 300 pounds a metabolic emergency and says, Hey Joe, Hey Jay, I want a 90 day plan from you. Here's $25,000. Yeah. And you and I are like, Hey bro, here's your money back. Yeah. 
You took 30 years to look like you're doing. There's no 90 day plan, but there aren't people out there. I mean, there's some of us, but there aren't enough of us. And so the younger people are listening to those people. And those people are saying, Hey man, go to Grant Cardone's $10,000 $10,000 mastermind, <laughs> put it on your parents' credit card, and you're going to become the next great internet marketer online. And so that's the scary part is like, we have an entire generation of society now that literally doesn't even know truth if they heard it, Joe, right. because they lack discernment, they lack critical thinking skills, and they are just copying and mimicking, which is again, what the dark side has always done and wants people to do again, consuming, yeah. not creating. Right. Because if you're copying and creating, I mean, you're copying and consuming, you're not creating, right? You're mimicking what you see online. Yeah. So it's, 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 we really are in a very nebulous place right now. And that a lot of people who do mean well and are hoping to improve their lot in life, they don't know how to pick somebody that can help them because there's so much bullshit. Yeah, they've, you know, they grew up on it. And as you were saying about, you know, the screen, I love, you know, Paul Check says, tell a vision, right? It's it's right. informing you of the vision they want you to believe. And you're exactly. absolutely right. And believe me, and I think it, it ties in as well to when we look at that group under 25 that, you know, they're lost, man. And I think there's this, like, Come you on. know, during the COVID thing, like it was really, it was really a spiritual war, yes, it, right? It still is. It still, it still is right is. now. Right. And so there's this absence of spirituality, absence of God, absence of, you know, um, just very basic moral truths. And so they're deconstructing all that and replacing it with the vision they want, which is going to help create sort of the reality that, well, that we're headed towards right now, unless, you know, something crazy happens. But I think, you know, as we look at like, well, what can we do? You know, we can kind of feel for those people and say like, a man, it's going to get ugly. And to your point, like, where are they going to find truth? When are they going to seek truth? They don't even have a guidance. They have no compass. They have no, they've never experienced truth. They've been living in the matrix their whole life. It's all they know. So I think there's going to be this, you know, there's going to have to be a lot of pain for a lot of those people and a lot of reconditioning. And who knows if many of them can be helped. But I think when we look at, say, like my son, who's two, it gets back to the name change. Like now, okay, I need to go. We need to go way up. If he's going to grow up in amongst that community, that world, well, how do I make sure he is he is straight and narrow? How do I make sure he has the deepest roots we can create. How do I know? How do I make sure he knows truth and has permission to step into his own? And that was kind of the story of a new, right? Like every moment we can start over every moment we can recalibrate every moment we can begin again. And so it was a lot of it was for my son and making sure he always has that permission. You know, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, it's like his name is changed into this, this much more expansive reality than, you know, a name that was passed down generation to generation to generation, carrying with it so many limiting beliefs. And this is true of any name, so many limiting beliefs, so many like, you know, uh, restrictions around, you know, money around relationships. How do we treat men? How do we treat women? You know, there's all of this, the last couple hundred years haven't been too pretty, you no. know, it's, you know, and so no. we can get into some of that, but I think there's this like, there's this massive change that needs to happen and seeking a higher frequency in any means possible is kind of the path to me. But, um, yeah, I think, I think calibrating to our truth and, you know, cause we're going to create, you know, this bifurcation, right. Where there's basically going to be the truth and the, and the science, um, and Trust the science. yeah, man, it's like the, and it's God and absence of God ultimately. So Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. It's true, dude. I mean, it's 100% true. It's God in the absence of God. I love that. Um, well, you saw a lot of stuff like Joseph Anu is now a primordial, like you said, expansive, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blank slate to create like a two totally new resonant 
reality. It's it, like you said, there's so much transgenerational trauma, you know, in that name. And, you know, like you said, every name, you know, Campbell, you know, my mm-hmm. wife's name's dad's name is Chamberlain. I mean, there's so many names, you know, all of our parents were immigrants to come to the States. I mean, I don't want to make this like a whole like esoteric discussion about the USA, America, America. I mean, the truth is that this is the new Atlantis. I mean, Roger Bacon wrote about it. You know, they they really designed the USA to get to this point now where it became this giant technocratic yeah. country that's not really a democracy. It's not even an oligarchy. Now it is a technocracy. We are now literally living in a corporation ruled by a select few technocrats who want to make us into fucking biobots. Yeah. They want to merge us with machine. And truthfully, and I, and I know you know this, and I think a great majority of my audience knows this now, this is, like you said, a spiritual war. This is a war between God and those without God, you know, that they can become God and that they can extend life forever and they can make us biotic and, you know, all their buddies at the World Economic Foundation, you know, can chip us and make us eat bugs and all this other bullshit. Yeah. But it's coming, and this is where I want to, you know, really take this podcast now. It's coming, Joe, to where you and I talk every Every time you and I talk, it comes down to this at some point, form or fashion. We're like, okay, where are we going to be? How are we going to live off the matrix grid? How are we going to exist without money and out without phones and without payment processors and all that bullshit? Because, bro, this is what we talked about on Saturday and Sunday at the Mastermind this weekend in the mountains of Utah. There is not a conscious entrepreneur on the planet right now who has not thought about this. Yeah. This is where it's going. We don't know how much time we have left. So, I mean, that's less than a year away that if you're in Canada and you're one of us, you are turned off. Yep. I told all my Canadian friends in the last 24 hours, my copywriter, Tom Zakharov, a lot of other people, it's time to leave. You don't have any more time. Do what you got to do. Spend the next 60 days, you know, saying goodbye find where you're going to move and leave. You don't have an option. I mean, people don't understand what's going on in China. Once it's up, they have everything. And you know this, everything you've ever said, everything you've ever texted, every voicemail you've ever left, every Google document that you've written in, they've already scanned. The AI knows where you're going to be in the hierarchy. Yeah. Dissonant, not dissonant, uh, renegade. I mean, I don't know the names of how they're going to label people, but if you're a non, you know, supporter of the demonic government, you will not have access to banking. Yeah. You will not have access to healthcare. Like that means anything at this point. <laughs> you won't have yeah. access to money. I mean, let's be honest. You will not have payment processing. Guys like you and I survive off this. The money comes in from PayPal or Stripe or wherever, and that's how we live. So once that gets turned off, uh, what's your option? What's your bug out plan? Where are you going to go? And dude, I find still so many people still don't think about this shit. And Canada doesn't have any more time. So the question, and I'll ask you, and you can pontificate on this. How far is the USA away from this? Uh, You know, Jay, it's, um, it's a challenging question. I think Canada gone, right? But, um, you know, it's, it's a challenging question. And I think there's, there's kind of the other piece of it and it's like, well, and what are we going to do about it? Right. Right. So it's like, whether it's six months or two years or, or whether, you know, the, you know, there's a revolution of some sort, we'll see. But I think what's been on my mind is, okay, like how do I control my environment as best I can? Right. And so there's this like, okay, so like I got to get to a, I got to get my family towards a beach, you know, at some point. So at least I can control that within this country, right? At least I can get into the water. I can get my feet in the sand. So it's almost like, how do I create a scenario that regardless of finances, regardless, I stand a decent chance at protecting like the vessel itself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and so how do I control my food source? How do I control my water source? Yeah. How do I make sure that I have access to nice nature? Um, and I think that that's kind of been my focus. And I think it is because probably I have a two-year-old and there's this like, it's very challenging because you know, it's coming and you know, it could even get uglier and you know that there's like, but there's also this, you know, here in Texas, a lot of people are teaching their three-year-olds how to fire guns and of course, bro. And how to fire and how to, you know, farm and shit like that. But it's also like, 
if shit hits the fan, I don't know if I want to be the guy with the 12 acre farm. No, no. You're going to have hundreds of thousands of people that are hungry. No communities. It's all going to be communities. It's, it's going to be small yeah. communities of people of like mind. And, and, and obviously I'm just blowing shit out of my ass yeah. right now too with you. Cause obviously we're going to need that guy with 12 acres. Cause he's going to need to grow. Yeah. But you're right. We're going to have to band together. I mean, yeah. but, but to the, you know, to that question, I mean, do you see this, do you think the USA and I, and you, I know you can answer too. you could say, well, you know, maybe Texas and Florida, let, you know, hold out, maybe California succeeds and becomes yeah. a demonic, you know, subsidiary of China. There's a lot of different ways that this could go. But I, I mean, I, I personally think, and again, this is just my opinion, and you know I'm a conspiracy analyst, <laughs> like Cliff Hyde says now. Dude, I don't see New York or California with even two more years. Right. I, I don't see it. Right. I mean, I mean, again, they're one event away from fucking anarchy in LA, anarchy in New York City. You know, they played that game with the EBT cards. When they pull the EBT cards and they stop working, what happens? You've seen the shit on Twitter in just the last couple of months. Yeah. And we know people are broke. This is all engineered with the financial nonsense. You know, there's sh shortages of food. Dude, I saw this, you know, I think you're in the Telegram group. If you're not, who gives a shit? But somebody put in there two days ago that 30% of renters in the United States right now across all states have not paid rent in 90 days. Holy 30% of all renters. So, I mean, imagine where we really are right now. And the matrix is just, and again, this is not, you know, people living beyond their means. I mean, yes, that's a West, that's a materialism, but this is by design, Joe, this is all happening by design. They want to create a crash. Yeah. There was another stat, Jay, real quick that said it was, I think it might've been 30% as well, maybe 35, something like that. But it said that amount of people making over $250,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. It's like the materialism, but they all There's probably no, drive uh, six cars. Thing. And Tony, Tony Monacone put in there the other day, 80% of people in the United States right now do not have $6,000 in reserves. That's the paycheck to paycheck statement. Yeah. So imagine like where we really are. Now, again, this is not a doom and gloom podcast. Everybody that watches this knows this. So like the rest of this will be about solutions, but, and I do want to talk about Runga, but like, it's just, it, we're in a very interesting timeline. I'll just share with what you told me last week. I've said, I've shared this with a bunch of people in our inner circle, but yeah, so, so to the audience, like Joe and I communicate a lot on Instagram, uh, not Instagram, WhatsApp. We leave voice messages for each other. Okay. He's in central time. I'm in West coast time normally, but a lot of times I'm in East coast if I'm traveling to Mexico. And so we leave messages and he was telling me a story about being in Florida. I won't go into the details. And then I'm like, well, you know, my story about Mexico, yeah. dude, we're in a time of complete flux. Like every person who's conscious right now probably has to make 10 micro decisions a day of like, where the fuck am I going to be in six months? Yep. That is how fluid all of this is. If you're still living in California and I'm one of those people, granted, I live in a red County, I'm in Riverside County, but I don't wear masks, you know, but it's still <laughs> no defense, you know, I, and, and you know, my wife has her family here. I have no family here. I have friends, but my family's all on the East coast. But like, you know, I told her, like, that's it. My daughters are now in Florida going to school. They're out of the demonic, you know, V sorcery and witchcraft that, you know, kids have to deal with in Cali. You know, you left California two years ago, you know, the whole deal. So it's like, I got to get, it's, it, it doesn't matter what might or might happen. I have to leave. My consciousness is saying, Jay, there is no purpose for you in California. Yes. You have a beautiful house. Yes. You have all these material creature features. Who gives a fuck? It's material. It doesn't even, it's not real. It's time to bounce. It's time to manifest destiny. Go where God takes you. And so that's happening now. I won't get into the deeper details, but it's interesting that all of us, because again, you were just last week sharing a very similar story with me. You may be relocating from Texas. I mean, all of us have to make these decisions now, bro. Like I said, like it's almost daily. Right. Right. And I think it's powerful, Jay. And, and it's, Kind of getting back to the God, no God group. It's almost like, so depending on your level of consciousness, you either guide from the mind or the heart. That's right. And so the heart, I believe to be magnetic. And I know I took yep. this from one of my yogis, but whereas the mind is a radio beacon, it's a radio right. tower. It's a, right. you know, and so, I mean, there's a lot out there right now messing with frequency and radio signal, right? You know, there's a lot of frequency out there that's not very good for us. That's fucking up the system. That's like 
creating noise, creating static. And so if you're a mind, if you live in the mind, I mean, you pretty much just submit, right? You pretty yep. much just go with the flow. But as you said, you know, the heart, you know, the heart is a magnet. So when you're called to make an action now, it's because that magnet is pulling you that way. And so there's this like, it's kind of beautiful, but I think that's the other thing about these two groups is that there's either these folks that are just so stuck in their head that everything has to make sense as they learned it in school. And one plus one has to equal two and, you know, that sort of logic. But then there's those of us that are sort of guided by our our heartbeat guided by our, our rhythm and our energy and our aura and our feeling body. And that's way more powerful, way more reliable. And it's like, it's almost like everyone says, you know, trust your gut, follow your heart. Um, you know, and as soon as you do, they say you're out of your mind and isn't that kind of the point. Right. And so I think that's what you're saying. It's like, when you start to feel those magnetic poles, it's like, it's a lot stronger than like a conscious radio signal that says, Hey, it, it would be a good investment to move to Nebraska. And here's all the reasons. So even though I don't really want to, um, you know, I'm going to do it because it's my rational mind. I think I can get three to one of my money in the next few years and you know, whatever this, that's very, like very mind oriented. It's a very right. conscious, it's right. a very like, um, yeah, it's, it, it's very granular. Whereas opposed to like, Hey, you know, I'm just feeling this, this Mexico thing. I'm just feeling this Florida pull. I feel like it's just the right choice for me right now. And I think heart signals are way more clear and yeah. people to your point about the school system, that indoctrination system is actually basically designed to get kids, get them to become adults that live in their head because That's your right. head can be so confused. So it's almost like, we are conditioned from a young age to tune down and stop listening to those impulses and that sort of magnetic draw and that sort of impulse or intuition. And we're trained to, to quiet that and just whatever the science says, whatever the math, whatever the arithmetic works out to, whatever the, you know, are you in a good relationship? Well, does he or she have a good job? Is like, da -da 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 -da. Right. And it's just like, yo, that's not it. Like, you know, there's no, everything that you can put in a box that's, you know, um, on paper that's, that's can be contained isn't real, as you said about all of your things. If, if you can describe it fully like that, it's not real. It's just. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, so things are so broken. So one of the things we talked about, I don't want to get to Runga here in a second, but one of the things we talked about, and by the way, I just got a message on Twitter. Somebody just hit me. They just turned off the energy. They just turned off the Eiffel tower because they are running out of electricity and right now in Paris. So again, no doom and gloom. You know, today is September 26th on Monday, but I think you have relatives, uh, uh, your, your wife's family is still a lot of people in France. I mean, look, bro, Europe, many countries in the European Union will be freezing and without food in two months. I mean, I mean, I have two contractors that work for me, you know, true story right now. One is in Ireland and one is in uh, one of the Balkan countries. I, I forget right now. And they're all dealing with doubling and tripling of utilities. I mean, this is not sustainable. I mean, businesses can't survive when you do this kind of shit. So again, we're not far away. We, you know, people should be prepared. I'm not saying you should be a prepper. I'm saying you should have a plan. You should be understanding that things are going to get really weird. But back to what you were saying about the heart. I mean, yeah, everything that they do is designed to get us into the left brain, which is again, the reptilian consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not the mammalian brain. I mean, they're not the mammalian heart center or channel. Like you said, the magnetic, I, I like to call it the coherence capacitor. That mm -hmm. is literally what the heart is. It's the coherence capacitor. And it's like, the more you spend in introspection, contemplation, meditation, sitting in silence, even, even just creating by yourself, maybe you got your animal or your dog next to you or a cat or whatever during the day, you know, that's when they have no power over you. Cause that's when your heart is aligning to source to the energy and frequency of creation force. And that's when you are literally like, again, able to harmonize the coherence capacitor. That's when you're able to literally resonate the energy and frequency of like creation or divinity, you know, however you want to look at it. And right. They, they put kids now in school, they put a screen in their face. You know, the whole distance learning thing is a scam. There's no energy field of humans. We were talking about that this weekend too. Like, when human beings of like mind get around each other, we actually create a resonant field 
that allows us to telepathically communicate. It allows us to be clairaudient, clairsentient, to feel, you know, other people's suffering, other people's pain, other people's trauma. But you're right, when when we're not in around other people and we're on these, we're in that field, which yep. is a dissonant frequency. Again, electromagnetics without even getting into it, how bad it is. It's crazy. You know, I, I have a podcast coming out Wednesday. I, I think you know this guy now, the guy that owns Blue Blocks, Andy Mant. Do you yeah. know him? Yeah. yeah. He's been Andy's on my pod amazing. a few times. Yeah. His podcast we did a couple months back. It has, you know, it comes out on Wednesday, but like it's supposed to come out on Monday, but my team screwed up last week. So I want to get one podcast <laughs> two, two days and the other. But uh, he talks a lot about EMF. Yeah. And how bad EMF is. And again, I don't want to freak people out, but I keep telling people like if you're driving a Tesla, you're shortening your lifespan. Yeah. People have no idea how dirty the EMFs coming out of Tesla uh, tech, Tesla energy, or what is it? Tesla coils are. It's yeah. not, yeah. It, there's no prayer day cage. Yeah. They're not harnessing the bad uh, frequencies. It's really nasty, dirty blue light in a giant generator sitting right below your biological field. Right. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, again, I don't want to go down that path because, you know, as you know, in California, bro, I think like out of every three people, somebody has a Tesla. Yeah. Well, and it's hilarious how many are in Texas now. It's like I go to Whole Foods. It's like all California plates. <laughs> it's crazy. It's all Teslas with California plates. <laughs> They've all left and they brought California yeah. to Texas. Mm -hmm. I know, dude. Which, know. yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. No, but um, you know, my you know the the energy fields are very real. And you know, my wife, I think I told you, super sensitive, super sensitive to EMF, like. We were, we were literally at a business meeting a little while ago in person and, you know, the guy comes over and, um, you know, he's got his phone in his pocket and the guy we're meeting with sits down at the coffee shop and my wife goes, Hey, can you turn your phone on airplane mode, please? Like he, he hadn't even like, what the hell's the matter with you? He didn't even turn his, he didn't even take his phone out. Like, you know, he might've not, he might've left it in the car, but as soon as a phone enters her field, <laughs> she just, you know, she feels it. Um, it's, it's wild. And yeah, people have no sort of, I think, and it's not doom and gloom in the, in the, in the sense that like, you got to be aware, like you have to be aware. Like if you've got a hybrid vehicle, you know, you've got your Wi-Fi on all the time, you know, I'm plugged into ethernet right now. It's like keeping your phone on airplane mode, not keeping it near you at night, right. like all of that stuff, dude, it matters because it's very hard. As you said, it's the key is to get that quiet stillness in. And if your brain is just a disaster from all of this, yeah. from having a phone near your head for the yeah. last hour, you're never going to yeah. get there. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Dude, even at the top of Utah, where I was in the mastermind in the remote, it was 5G. I'm telling you, bro, Mexico might be the option. Mex I just found this out. Mexico will not have 5G until 2026. Mm. So there's still three and a half years or 3.3 or 3.3 and a half years before it's even there. And, and by the way, and this is another scam. And I think, I don't know if you and I ever talked about this, bro. LTE is a faster network than mm -hmm. 5G. It's a scam. I don't know what, I mean, it, at some point, even the non-conspiracy analysts among us will realize that they went backwards. Mm -hmm. So if they went backward, then what is the real reason? What is the primary motive to be a less speedy, less efficient technology? Well, it's something to do with harming cellular life. Right. I mean, dude, it's in the book. I mean, anybody can read The Electric Rainbow. That book's not. I yeah. mean, the book is fantastic. It mm -hmm. literally tells you that since 1871 with the invention of the radio wave and now to where we are now, it definitely statistically provably decimates the biosphere. Yep. There are mass die-offs as they change the frequency. And every time it goes up, it makes it worse. And so everyone is being harmed by all of this electromagnetic. And as you were saying, like the only thing that you can do as a human to not be reactive is to be fully optimized. Yep. All these different therapies, supplements. I mean, great. If you can't use testosterone because of blank and you want to do everything anally retentive, great. You're just going to work 10 times harder right. 
than somebody who isn't. And again, this goes for men and women. Okay, I want to talk about Runga, but I want to like kind of segue it because there's a lot of other points that you have, and I don't want to like talk forever about Dharma and uh, the passage and rights of masculinity. Just tell me a little bit about Runga right now and like who it's for. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, so Runga is designed, it's, it's the reverse of, you know, everything you said a minute ago as to like the backstory of the quarantines and the social distancing, you know, it was all to protect energy field. Right. And so when you look at this experience, you know, it's easy for us to put on the website, what we do. And so you can imagine a three day experience where you've got like a, you know, Michelin star chef cooking, just incredible food for you for three days. You've got this like amazing environment with um, influencers like Ben G. I tried to get you to come this year. Um, Am I? I, I hey, you let me know. Hyper oxygen. So like all of these therapies, the idea is we want people to feel 10 years younger in three days, but the real magic that's tougher to put on the website. And the reason we have an application process, we have an interview process because we cultivate this group of 50 people for each event that is just radiant, that is vibrant. Because as you know, if you come in at a consciousness 300, you might leave at 325, 350, yeah. 375. And so there's this incredible community atmosphere that, that makes everything else we do work better. So when you're in that environment, and, and by the way, you know, it's interesting as well, where, you know, we're kind of going forwards and backwards at the same time. And in many ways, you know, those forward, those forward reaching, including things like 5G, the tech is kind of getting to the point that it's just disarming us. But there's a lot, you know, even in Tony Robbins' new book, there's a lot of therapeutic technologies that are coming out. But we know the key to sustainability and the key to self self regulation and self control and sustainability are these ancient practices that have been around forever. So we go deep into sound healing, we go deep into meditation, mindfulness, yoga, and meditation. But then you walk away from this gong bath with a yogi with a long <laughs> white beard. And you go and get an NAD injection and jump into a hyperbaric <laughs> oxygen chamber. So there's this like, yeah, this incredible environment where you're kind of getting that full spectrum over the past 5,000 years of wellness. Like what's the best of the best, both from the now and from the then. And so that's kind of what Runga's up to. All right. So I'm sharing the screen real quick here. It's a human you know, website, experience. Website's beautiful now. I mean, I haven't been on here in a while. You made really made it really awesome improvement. I like this down here too. I would actually, if I was going to put my internet marketing hat, I would tell you put this back up here, literally right here. I would put uh, apply right there because this yeah. is so powerful. I would put that right there. So anyway, yeah. that's my internet marketing <laughs> thing for you. I'll tell. Because uh, I just came from an internet marketing mastermind <laughs> and they went through all my properties and they, you're fucking up here and you're uh, good over there. No, but yeah. that's like, I mean, your website's gold. That's literally my only critique of your website would be like, because I have to do the same thing. Like, hey man, you got to give them a reason to purchase at the top. But no, yeah. But it's interesting, uh, yeah, right? I, mean, I might, bro. Um, you know, it, like I said, you know, there's a lot of very dynamic stuff going on in my life. A lot of which I don't, I'm not sharing yet because it's like my wife said, you can't say it until we're here. <laughs> I mean, dude, like the truth is, man, you know, I love you and I'm happy to share this with you. I mean, dude, it's been going back and forth, but my wife and I were not going to make it. You know, my kids are now on the East coast in Florida. Her kids are here. Her family's here. My family's back there. I don't really have a connection to my family, but they are back there. But my kids are in Florida. Yeah. And it's like they're 14 and 12 and they're attempting to reestablish, you know, the relationship, Alexandra and Gabriella. They're trying to, not trying, but they're attempting to reestablish the relationship with their mom. And obviously they're not in California. They don't have to deal with the demonic school shit. Yeah. It's, I mean, as you know, you just came from there. Florida is legitimately still quote unquote normal yep. comparatively to the rest of the blue check demonic you know, whatever you want to call new regime of post COVID or whatever it is until the next scam comes, you know, they're not part of the world economic forum. They're not right. part of the UN. They're not part of any of that bullshit. So it's like, they have this normal life. They've been back there now for three and a half months and both of them love it. Yeah. And bro, they were living in a, you know, a, everything to a two bedroom apartment yeah. and they're like happy as pigs and shit. So yeah. there, there's something to be said about normalcy about socialization, about kids being kids and having other kids around them to connect with and communicate. And obviously the last two years destroyed all that. So yeah. uh, that's awesome though about Runga. And yeah, for you guys that are watching this, you know, it's an amazing event. You know, Ben's always there, you know, Joe attracts some really awesome influencers, some really good people. Uh, so go to the website, you know, click on the application and figure out if it's something for you. Uh, I want to finish with um, Dharma. 
and maybe just a little bit of the rites of passage with masculinity, but Dharma is a little bit more important, but just maybe yeah. just your thoughts on that. Yeah, man. I, I believe that we're all here for a purpose. You know, we're here with a very specific task and a very specific, you know, whether it's, whether it's a healing, whether it's a creation, whether it's a, um, a deviation, you know, the name change in many ways to me was like, I just changed my son's future maybe by who knows, maybe 10%, but maybe 80%, who knows? But that small deviation was a big contribution of this lifetime I'm in right. to the future generation of my son. Uh, Runga is very much a contribution. You know, it's very much a creation that is designed to kind of help those around me and, and create a scenario, a very safe environment where people can heal and connect with their purpose. You know, a lot of people, I, I call them the belongers and the becomers. A lot of people come to belong and once they belong, they can become something greater than they are currently. And so when we look into Dharma and, and Dharma is a really interesting thing because we're all here for a purpose. There are things when we look back at our life that uh, really light us up that we've really enjoyed. And a lot of people get close. A lot of people get close to their Dharma, but they're not quite there. So in other words, um, you know, even looking at Spartan Race, right? So I was an executive at Spartan Race for the better part of the last 10 years. And what I came to realize is that I got into it because I love climbing mountains. I got into it because I love the physical adversity. I got into it because that's what lights me up and helps me open my heart and fill my cup. But I ended up sitting behind a desk and sitting on planes. Right. And so there's this, well, why was the first couple of years I was there so great? And why when we corporatized, you know, took venture money, whatever, and it changed, why did I suddenly not feel full? Why did, right. why was it no longer fulfilling to me? And, you know, there's a lot of people in jobs and I think sports are probably a big part of that. Baseball players now work in the office at the baseball team and they're close, but they're not quite in their Dharma, right? They're not quite where they're supposed to be. And so when we're in our Dharma, you know, synchronicities and, uh, coincidences and ease more importantly, like when we look at what's happening right now, uh, people are so out of alignment, you know, this past bunch of years with, you know, education, I, you know, I think it was Elon Musk that said, it's crazy that a high school kid can get a half a million dollar in, uh, half a million dollars in student debt, right. But not a $10,000 business loan. Right. Right. And so we're in this this striving energy is really what the educational system has created. We're striving and we're not even striving for, we're not even striving for the knowledge or the wisdom or the intelligence or the capacity. We're striving for the piece of paper that says we're great. We're striving for, you know, the job title. And so that is like the opposite of Dharma. Right. And, um, and so I guess getting back to people that find their Dharma in most cases, uh, it's people that are doing something that they began to love in childhood. And they just never stopped doing it. And so a lot of times when we're searching for our dharma, uh, we got to go back and see what's lit us up across our life. When did we feel most alive? And what you'll find is that when you start sinking your teeth into that thing, that's when you get out of the mind into the heart and you just start getting guided. You just start getting magnetically pulled to the next right decision and people work their way into your life just like you did whenever it was years ago, right? It was this, like we were supposed to meet. There's oh. a few people right now trickling into my life. And, and actually, let me just mention something on that. It's like, you know, I had some healing to get through this weekend that I didn't even really know about. But when we look at energy and we look at people that are super skeptical, and a couple of months ago, I went to a Joe Dispenza event and it was amazing. It was great. But afterwards, I'm in the, you know, in the restaurant with a bunch of people that attended the event. And I was the only one that was happy about it. Everyone had a qualm. Like, I, you know, I can't meditate without the scientific research. I can't <laughs> meditate. And it was like, dude, 90% of the event was the science. Like, it was just bizarre. We're doing a chakra meditation. And she, he spent five minutes on each chakra. That was way too long. It was just like, oh my goodness. So there's this like, um, there's this belief and trust and without, without, uh, believing in a higher consciousness and without that, when you're in that sort of mind, it's like you, you lose trust, you lose faith and therefore you often lose Dharma. And I just wanted to say, it's like people trickle into your life. I, I didn't realize that I had this thing to work through this weekend. There was a woman at this event. I don't even know her name. And she actually told a few different people that her name was something different. She told yeah. me her name was one thing. She told someone else her name was. <laughs> I, and I said like a few times, I'm like, who are you? What are you? But this woman, Jay, could 
put me to, she could put me to my knees or my, just by looking at me. There was so much power coming out of this. Did lady. you find out who she was? Was she an no. archangel in a body? Dude, I still don't know, Maybe. but she said she'd call me. She yeah, said she'd that, call that me, call but never coming. she won't, she wouldn't, she doesn't give a phone number out. She gave different name to all sorts of people, <laughs> but dude, I'm not kidding you. She'll come to you at a meditation. I know, dude, she was, but she could literally drop me to my knees with her freaking eyes just by looking at me. She had so much power. It was insane. And what did that lead to? It led me into this like incredibly spiritual opening. And so I guess what I'm getting at is like when there's this trust and this comes from kind of stepping into your purpose, um, as opposed to out of it, you pull in these people that are here to just help you get to that next level easier and without the difficulty and give you the courage to change your name, change your job, change where you live, move out of the country, sell your stuff, whatever it is. It's like, that's all purpose. That's all heart. That's all that's Dharma. Right, that's yeah. right. And, but it is, I mean, you know, I could talk to you about forever on that. I, I don't want to make this podcast any longer because it's been amazing, but uh, as our, our podcasts always are, it is a purpose and it is a calling. And for me to question my material life, to be, you know, it's because I we were we were talking. One of the guys came up with it this weekend. He's like, "Oh, bro, man, I'd love to be you. You're gonna go back and decouple." And I'm like, "Decouple? That's the word I'm gonna use. I'm gonna say that <laughs> I'm decoupling." Yeah, and yeah. I won't go in deeper, but you know what that means. And so it's like, it's surrender. Yeah. This is surrender. Yeah. This is literally via condios. Mm -hmm. This is let go, let God. I mean, this is when you are at a place where like, hey, man, I made it before. I lost it. I made it again. I lost it. Who gives a fuck? It's not even real. I'm not trying to get to this number. I'm not a trying to, a, you know, again, trying be the operative word. I'm not trying to collect this many toys. It's letting go and letting God. It's knowing that God is driving me. It's driving you. He's driving every single you, one of you listening to this podcast. And it's any of our resistance to that awareness that blocks the greatness from happening. And all of us at various times and points are in resistance Yep. because we're literally questioning source. We're questioning the ultimate determinism of it's all going to happen as it's supposed to. And, you know, again, because we do get caught up in the past and we get caught up in the, in the future prophesizing and the future prophesizing in the past are irrelevant Joe, because they don't even exist. Yeah. Right. And that's why we get so lost because we start thinking about, well, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll use this and then we'll end it is, you know, a part of me is doing this right now because in 2008, I didn't. Like I knew my higher self was telling me to sell and get out of Dodge, which was California then. And I didn't do it. And then mm -hmm. when I did, which was 2010, I lost a lot of things. Again, things meaning nothing, but my higher self was guiding me then, Yep. but I didn't listen to it. And it cost me literally seven figures yep. in my life. Now, again, it's all meaningless, but as you know, Having the currency and energy of money or wealth or whatever you want to call it allows you to be more flexible mm -hmm. in your existence. And I literally was in 2008 being called by my higher self, dude, it's time. And I just didn't do it. So now it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to turn my back. I right. sense what's coming. I think everybody does. And if you're in a position where you can take things off the table and you can live way more frugally. You can downsize, you can cut out things, you can cut back. Now's the time to do it. I don't care who you are, how much money you are, where you're at, because as you know, the more things that you accumulate, the more money that you have, the more, again, everything of nothing, the more stress yeah. that comes from managing it all, right? preventing people from getting it, maximizing it, growing it, compounding it. It's all insane. The only purpose that we're here is to evolve and grow our soul and to love, to give and to receive love. So it's like, if you just want to give and receive love, you don't need anything to give and receive love. Right. But I'll tell you right now, bro, as you know, a sunrise and a sunset at the beach every day, it's pretty difficult to beat that, man. Yeah. It's Meditating true. on the beach in the morning as the sun comes up. I mean, right. what's better than that? I mean, some people might say, well, being in the mountains, it's 18,000 feet or 12,000 feet. Yeah, it's right there. 
the cities and the technocracies yeah. and all this shit that we've been brainwashed to want to be at and to have, that's not it, dude. Right. right. But you got to get there. And a lot of people haven't got there yet. You know, they're still climbing. They're still wanting to be there. They want to get, you know, I, that one of the guys at the mastermind this weekend was 31 and he was like, you know, dude, he's like, everything you say, you know, really resonates with me, but I just want to like get to a place where I don't even have to like worry about my next meal, you know, my next, where I'm going to be living in four months. And so, you know, everybody's at various stages, mm -hmm. but it's just getting to that place where what matters is again, giving and receiving love and realizing that you're on the right path. Right. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. hundred percent. Joe, I love you, man. Uh, where can people connect with you, find you, how, you know, what's the easiest way for them to work with you if they want to do a podcast with you? How do they do that? Yeah. So, well, first rungalife.com is kind of the hub right now. I still have my website, coachjodi.com as well, which the new website's coming now with the name change, but coachjodi.com, you can submit a contact form there. Uh, but yeah, if you're seemingly interested in Runga, this event might fill up. I'm not sure when this show is going to go live. The event is October 13th to 15th, but we are going to do a couple next year as well. So you can always jump on a wait list for a future event if you miss out on this October one. All right. So I think I got that right. There we go. Life.com and then coachjodi.com, correct? That's right. That's All right. All right. So guys, go to those two sites. Joe is a master. He is one of my closest friends. He is a visionary leader on this planet and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. So always support the amazing people like Joseph Anu. I love that name, by the way, just to say it. And remember, Thanks. raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thanks, Jay. That was beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs>